All right, uh, hey guys. When we uh, when we last left off yesterday, we had looked at uh, multiplying and dividing, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Um, so example one in A and B part had us multiplying them, simplifying and stating the restrictions. Example two it had us, uh, or pardon me, B part had us dividing, and example two had us multiplying where there were slightly more complex terms. Um, I haven't received too many homework requests yet, so as of right now I haven't included any. Uh, maybe if I get more I'll, I'll sort of make an addition to this uh, video and put it at the beginning. But first things first, uh, we're going to carry on with the lesson. So today we're going to simplify and state restrictions again, just like we did yesterday. But today, if you look, the operation involved is addition. Addition. Now, rational expressions, you'll remember, we said are any expressions that contain a fraction. Um, so here we are with one uh, example three, question A, and we have a fraction plus a fraction. Now the first thing you may remember is we said that we like to check for restrictions right at the beginning. And here we have one over seven B and one over five B. And so the question is over here already, what do we know? What can X not equal? Well, we can never divide by zero, and since we can never divide by zero, we need to make sure neither bottom equals zero. And here, if I make b equal to zero, seven times zero is zero, so that's a restriction for this, and five times zero is zero, so that's also a restriction for this. So in this case, x cannot equal zero. I want to quickly show you what these two functions look like. Um, so if we have one f at b equals what was it? Uh, 1 over 7b. We know when I punch this in that b shouldn't be possible at 0. And if you look, here we get an asymptote, which we talked about earlier, where x will get really close to 0 um, and begin to go down really fast towards negative infinity. And here, if we approach from the right side, again, we'll get really close to 0 but we will never get there. And if you look, if we try to evaluate f at zero, the answer is infinity, which again is undefined. It, it's not something we can put on here. Um, and one over five b will give us the exact same result. If we look, it changes shape ever so slightly, but in general, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same function. So there's one over seven b, there's one over five b, quite similar. Now, to add fractions, we must find a common denominator. We need to find a common denominator. So we will make a note of that here quickly. We're going to find a common denominator. So with that in mind, to find a common denominator here, the first example is pretty simple. Um, you know that if we were adding the fractions 1 over 7 and 1 over 5, we'd have to look for something that both of these can multiply to. When in doubt, the easiest thing is the numbers themselves multiplied together. So in this case, uh, 35 is definitely a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be 35, and obviously we need to make sure we include the b. So the denominator for each will be 35 b. So the first fraction here I'm going to put over 35b, and the second fraction here I'm also going to put over 35b. And the question just becomes, what do we have to multiply this by? Well, I had to multiply this one top and bottom. To get a denominator of 35b, I have to multiply the bottom by 5, and so I must multiply the top by 5. And what we end up with is 5 over 35b. Now here, to get 35b as a common denominator, I have to multiply the bottom, which is currently 5b, times 7. And if I multiply the bottom by that, then I also have to multiply the top by 7. And so what we end up with is 5 over 35b plus 7 over 35b. And once the denominators are common, I can put them together and I can do the addition. 5 plus 7 is 12, and there we are. Now, 
If possible, I would reduce this, but 12 and 35 don't reduce. And so that's it, we're done. That's the simplified answer. 1 over 7b plus 1 over 5b equals 12 over 35b. And the restriction is that b can't equal 0. It occurs to me that up here I said that x can't equal 0, but obviously I meant b. All right, so that's an easy example where all we had to modify was the number. Sometimes, however, we get much uglier examples. Um, and the next few start to get that way. Here, in B, if we look, we again have to find a common denominator. But this time, uh, on this side we have 2xy squared, and over here we just have 2y. So the question is, what is already common about them? Well, they both already have a 2 and a y but this one has an x, and then it's multiplied by another y, so it's y squared. And so we can actually use this as the common denominator. All right, we can say that the common denominator will be 2xy squared. Now the nice thing with that is, do we have to multiply this by anything? No. So we can just rewrite this one just as it comes to us. xy squared plus 2 over 2xy squared minus, now here, in this case, to get a common denominator of 2xy squared, we have to multiply the bottom, well it already has a 2, so we don't need to worry about the number, but it doesn't have an x, so we have to multiply it by x, and that only has y, but we need it to be y squared, so we will make it multiply it by x and another y. But if we multiply the bottom by that, then we have to multiply the top by that as well. And so what we get is xy times y plus 2 over 2xy squared. That's subtraction, by the way. I hope that makes sense. We did the same thing we did here. Here we made a common denominator by multiplying by 5 over here and by 7 over here and we multiply the bottom and the top by the same number, we did the same thing here. But here we want the common denominator to be 2xy squared, so I had to multiply the bottom by xy and the top by xy. Now with this we are going to have to, Amy Tuck, distribute it, right? We're going to have to rainbow it. We're going to have to put it in. So xy will get multiplied by y, and xy will get multiplied by 2. And in the next term, as I write it out, I can say it equals xy squared plus 2 over 2xy squared minus, and then we can distribute this. So xy times y will be xy squared, and xy times 2 will be plus 2xy. And again, the denominator stays the same, which is 2xy squared. And so now, just like we did here, we can combine them into one term. And actually collect our like terms. So we have xy squared plus 2 minus, and remember this minus sign is going to apply to all of this stuff, so we're going to subtract xy squared. And we're going to subtract 2xy, because remember that negative sign will distribute in. It applies to the whole fraction. We're subtracting all of this. So we subtract xy squared, but we also subtract 2xy. And with that in mind, we say minus 2xy, just like that. And lastly, once we've done that, we can collect our terms. So we have xy squared minus xy squared. That will just cancel out to nothing. So maybe I'll use a, a red pen to show that. xy squared cancels with negative xy squared. And what we're left with is 2 minus 2xy. Over 2xy squared. And the last thing I'd say is if we want to, we can take a common factor from the top, and that would be 
2, that's right. So I could factor out 2, and we would get 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, minus, and then 2xy divided by 2 is just xy. My minus signs keep disappearing today, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Anyway, divide by 2xy squared. And now, because we only have multiplication here and multiplication down here, we can actually uh, cancel out, not factor out, but cancel out those 2s. And that's going to leave us with our final answer of 1 minus xy over xy squared. And there's nothing more I can do to factor that, so that is the final answer. All right. So a lot of work there, a lot of steps, I know. And this stuff takes practice. Multiplying and dividing rational expressions is really easy and simple. Uh, adding and subtracting them, a lot more complicated. All right? It's a lot more challenging, to be sure. Um, and it takes a little bit of practice. All right? Practice being the operative word. Now, remember we have to state restrictions. And we always state our restrictions from the beginning. So if we look here, from this side... Uh, if I set x equal to 0, then the whole thing would equal 0. And if I set y equal to 0, the whole thing would equal 0. So x can't equal 0 and y can't equal 0. And then over here, again, if I set y equal to 0, the whole thing would equal 0. So y can't equal 0. So those are my restrictions. x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. All right? So there's the simplified form. And those are the restrictions. All right, I want you to try this one here first um, on your own. Uh, pause this video, and after a few minutes, uh, you guys can come here and watch me do it. All right, I'm going to assume that the teachers paused this, and now we're going again. So let's look here. If we look, we have a factor on the bottom here and a factor on the bottom here. And I'm going to make a simple note. First, let's check our restrictions. The restriction we get from this, x plus 3, is that x cannot equal what? Well, we just flip the sign to make it equal to 0. This term can't equal 0, so we say x cannot equal negative 3. Because if it did, this bottom term would, term would become 0, and we can't divide by 0. Likewise, this one tells us that x cannot equal negative 2. Because if x were equal to negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 would be 0, and that term would be impossible. So first things first, those are our restrictions. Now, let's look at our greatest common, or our common denominator, and we're going to make a note. You can always multiply one denominator by the other. To get a common denominator. All right, in this case, we can always get a common denominator by multiplying x plus 3 times x plus 2. And that's, in fact, exactly what we're going to do. So our greatest, our common denominator is going to be just these two things multiplied together. x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now, with that in mind, let's rewrite this line. Well, we want the common denominator to be x plus 3 times x minus, or x plus 2, rather. To make that the denominator, we had to multiply this term, top and bottom, by, well, it's already got an x plus 3, so we need to add in an x plus 2. So x plus 2 times the top, and x plus 2 times the bottom, just like that. When we do that, we end up with what we already had on the top, which is x minus 5. Times x plus 2, times the number we multiplied in, right there. And there we go. Okay, so now we've 
put this under our common denominator of x plus 3 and x plus 2. Now, now we need to do the same for the second term. And again, our denominator is going to be x plus 3 times x plus 2. And so what we need to do quickly is look and say, what do we have to multiply this by top and bottom to get that as the denominator? And we already have the x plus 2, so we need to multiply it by x plus 3 on the bottom. And whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top, just like that. So now we will have x minus 7 on the top and x plus 3 just like that. Now, these questions are not complicated. They're really not. This step of finding a common denominator creates a big ugly mess, but it's not an incredibly complicated thing. We just multiply these two together. We just see which factors are on the bottom, and we multiply them together so that they're both on each side. And we can go ahead and combine this into a single fraction. x plus 3 times x plus 2 on the bottom, and then on the top we have x minus 5 times x plus 2, and that's being added to x minus 7 times x plus 3. Now, what does become an issue is we're going to have to FOIL this out, collect like terms, and then factor. Those are the steps. All right, and I'm going to write the steps here. One is find a common denominator. All right, and then once you've found a common denominator, the next two steps we're going to have to follow are FOIL, collect like terms, factor, and then finally we're going to cancel, all right? And these become pretty systematic. We're always going to follow these same basic steps. So let's go ahead and do that. We've collected our like terms already, or er, sorry, we found our common denominator already, rather. Now we need to FOIL it out. So when we go to FOIL it out, we'll do the first one first. We're going to do first with first, so x times x, and then the outsides, x with 2, and then the insides, negative 5 with x, and then the last. Oh boy, a lot of terms, right? But that's okay. We just take it one step at a time. So x times x is... Oh, I'm going to work a little higher up, because this might take a few lines. So, x times x is... x squared x times 2 is 2x. Negative 5 times x is minus 5x. And lastly, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And now I've foiled this side. There it is. Now, we're going to do the same with this side. All right, plain and simple. So again, we're going to do first, outside, inside, and last. All right, we're going to foil it, just like we always do, rainbowing if you prefer. And, when we, and because it's addition here, it's nice and easy. I don't even need to bother with a bracket because none of the signs are going to change, so it's easy. x times x gives us plus x squared, x times 3 gives us plus 3x, negative 7 times x gives us minus 7x, and lastly negative 7 times 3 gives us minus 21. So there we go, we've foiled, we've found our common denominator, we've foiled, next we have to collect like terms. So go ahead and pause this video and do that. Alright, I'm going to assume we're back. So if we look here, 
I'm going to quickly go and say, okay, I have an x squared here, and it's going to go with an x squared here to give us 2x squared. All right, and now we have the x's. I have 2x, negative 5x, 3x, and negative 7x. All right, I have to collect all four of those terms. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0, minus 7 is negative 7, and I'm left with negative 7x. All right. And lastly, we have these terms. I have negative 10 and negative 21, and those add up to minus 31. All right, and that is all over x plus 3 and x plus 2. All right, so we've collected our like terms. All right, so we've collected our like terms, and now in this case, in this particular case, uh, this does not factor nicely. If you look, there's no common factor, all right? And then if we were to use the AC rule, if we wanted to use sum and product, it would be a sum of negative 7 and a product of negative 62, and, uh, and there's just no number that gives you that. So this won't factor nicely, so we don't have to worry about this. And because it won't factor, it also won't cancel, and that would be our final answer. Um, but if, if this one were factorable, then you would have to factor it. All right, and that brings us to our last question. And this one's a doozy, all right? This brings all of the skills together. This is challenging stuff without a doubt, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find a common denominator, then we're going to FOIL out, collect like terms, factor, and cancel. Even finding a common denominator here is challenging, because we have to factor both of these. If you look here, these were already factored for us. Here, they're not factored. Here, you have to do the factoring yourself. So... Let's get to it. First things first, we're going to factor. All right. So when we factor this, obviously the top is going to remain unchanged. The bottom, uh, it's not a perfect square, so we have to use sum and product. A sum of 2 and a product of negative 48. Well, that's not so bad. We have 6 times 8 is 48, so negative 6 times 8, or negative 8 times 6 comes to mind. Which one of these gives us a sum of positive 2? And that's this one here. So, x minus 6, and x plus 8. And there we go. We factored that term. Not so bad. Now, we subtract this one. And the top now is x minus 9. I like to go ahead and put these in brackets, by the way, because you're going to be multiplying them soon enough. So it'll make your life a little easier. And again, we're going to have to use sum and product. This time we have a sum of negative 1 and a product of negative 30. All right. You can take a minute, pause the video if you like, and do that. But it's going to work out to be negative 6 times positive 5 are the sum and product we use. And so we get x minus 6 and x plus 5. Good. All right. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, what you really need to be reviewing is factoring, which we've done a lot of already. Uh, and there we go. Now, quickly we're going to say, okay, what's our common denominator going to be? We have to find a common denominator. Well, this denominator has an x minus 6. This denominator has an x minus 6. But this one has an x plus 8, and this one has an x plus 5. So we're going to have a common denominator that has all three of those terms. So our common denominator will end up being x minus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 5. It'll just be all three terms together. So, x minus 6 x plus 8, and x plus 5. 
And to accomplish that, what did I have to multiply this by, top and bottom? Well, I already had the x minus 6, I already had the x plus 8, so I just had to multiply in the x plus 5. So we do x plus 5 on the top, and x plus 5 on the bottom. And when we do that, the top becomes x plus 5 times x plus 9, and there we go. Now, we now have to subtract the second one. All right, and again, with this here, I had to multiply by what? Well, I already had x minus 6. I already had x plus 5, so the only term missing is x plus 8. So I put an x plus 8 on the top. And whatever I do to the top, I also have to do to the bottom. And that's it. And what I'm left with here is x minus 9 times x plus 8. And on the bottom, x minus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 5. And we can now put this into one big long term, x minus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 5, just like that. And on the top, we now have to FOIL it out. So pause this video again, go ahead and do that, and when you come back, we'll practice it. All right, so you're back. We're going to FOIL the first term out. And when we do that, I'm going to get x times x, which gives us x squared, x times 9, which gives us 9x, 5 times x, which gives us 5x, and 5 times 9, which gives us 45. And there we go. And we're also going to FOIL out the other side. And when we do that, I will get minus. Now keep in mind, I've got to put all this in brackets, right? Because we're going to have to flip the sign of everything inside when we're all said and done. x times x gives me x squared. x times 8 gives me 8x. Negative 9 times x gives me minus 9x. And negative 9 times 8 gives me negative 72. Just like that. Now we're going to rewrite this and we're going to FOIL that negative sign in, it's going to flip the sign of every single term inside the bracket. This is an important step just to be careful with. And when I do that, I get x squared plus 9x plus 5x plus 45 minus x squared minus 8x plus 9x plus 72. I've simply flipped every sign by multiplying that negative sign in, and the bottom remains x minus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 5, just like that. Now we just have to collect our like terms, so we're going to do that. It may look big and ugly, but we just do it carefully. So we'll come up here, and we'll say, okay, well, I have x squared minus x squared, so those cancel. That's easy. So x squared cancels with x squared. Now I have 9x. Oh. I have 9x plus 5x minus 8x plus 9x. All right. So that gives us 9 and 5 is 14. Minus 8 is 6. Plus 9 is 15. So that gives us 15x. And then lastly, we have 45 and 72, and that adds up to 117. And that is all over. x minus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 5. We, uh, well, that's much better. We have now collected our like terms. We're left with 15x plus 117 over x minus 6 times x plus 8 times x plus 5. Now, 
if you recall, oh, yeah, there we go. Let's wait just a second, guys. If you recall, our next steps were to factor and cancel. Again, in this example, there's not much we can do to factor. Uh, the one thing we can do is factor a greatest common factor out from the top term. Uh, and when we do that, both 15 and 117 are divisible by 3. Uh, that may not have been immediately obvious to you, but 15 divided by 3 is 5, so we're left with 5x. And 117 divided by 3, I think, is 39. Hopefully you'll double-check that for me on a calculator. And on the bottom we have x minus 6, x plus 8, x plus 5. So now we've factored. And the last thing we can do is we can cancel any terms that appear on the top and the bottom. And as you can see here, there are no terms that appear on the top and the bottom. So given that, we're done. Um, I believe the question also asked us to state restrictions. So we can look at restrictions. Uh, the factors never really change. If you look at the beginning on the bottom, we have x minus 6, x plus 8, x minus 6, and x plus 5. And at the end, we have the same. So the factors on the bottom have never changed. Uh, so we can just look here, and we can say, well, x can't equal 6, because if we put 6 in, this term would equal 0, which would make the whole denominator equal 0 x can't equal negative 8, because if we put negative 8 in for x, this would equal 0, and x can't equal negative 5. All right, so there we go. We've factored it. We haven't canceled because we're not able to. We've stated our restrictions. And again, if you look, those are the same restrictions that apply here. Now, if you're looking at this going, wow, I find this really challenging, I find this stressful, I hate this, these definitely require a lot of practice. Um, and I cannot stress enough that you need to go through and do this. Now, here's the good news. We are going to take tomorrow as a straight consolidation day. So tomorrow in class, uh, we're just going to do questions, we're just going to do more examples. But believe me when I tell you, you're at this point in this course where if you don't focus, uh, you can get left behind. So please... Uh, take the time today and work on today's homework questions, all right, which are right here. A lot of stuff to cover here, a lot of practice. Just so you know, three M's, uh, I would give you questions this challenging on an assignment. You would never get anything nearly this challenging on a test. Um, you might get something this challenging, but even that uh probably would be more assignment material and more test material you're going to see more things like this uh three u's on the other hand you're definitely 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 uh, going to see questions a lot like this on the test and you need to know how to do them uh, having said that all of you have got the same homework for the day it's right there so hop to it good luck um and i will see you all tomorrow have a wonderful day